where the fun begins. Hello, and welcome to the council. We begin tonight's meeting of the council by calling the council to order. Hello to everyone, and thank you for joining us. The council's a live Twitch talk show and podcast discussing Star Wars The Old Republic. Wow, my mouth did not want to work right there. I'm Elise, and with me are my fellow council members, Sakari. Hello, everybody. And Reda. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> That's what happens when you get a little bit of rhythm to something. <laughs> and Magic Ace is off um, smacking around the hut. She will not be here. Oh, say what's in the show notes. Come on, I put that in there for Oh, you say it. <laughs> I said she's getting how to say raffle stomped. She's getting <laughs> raffle stomped by a nightmare in a hood. Again, I'm a console. <laughs> I'm a console first player. We don't say those things on there. <laughs> PC lingo. P master is speak, right? Like it requires that whole stupid keyboard nonsense. Mm. <laughs> so oh. oh, as I lose my voice on top of it. So tonight we're going to be talking about the the uh tomorrow's Dantooine incursion event, right? It is tomorrow. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. June fourth, right? It is tomorrow, right? It is yes. tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow morning it deploys. Okay. 5.10.3. I, like, I had like a moment. Because <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, it's two weeks, the 11th. No, the 4th. <laughs> okay. It's only it's so, only uh, one one week delayed, right? Yes. And there's so yes. much stuff on the calendar, it though. It's easy to get. Weeks. They're two. having it go for two weeks instead of just one week. So, yes. I know. I'm just thinking that this may be... Regarding a, a date that was given by Bioware and the delay, this may be the shortest delay from a state of date ever. Yes, I love it. Yes. Okay, so everyone, I want you. I, I want you. And guess who's with me tonight? <laughs> it's it's Redness Agnor companion. <laughs> Dude, I am so ready for that. By the way, I will squeal. <laughs> Sorry, I had I had that joke waiting. I just didn't know if I should do it or not. <laughs> But then I heard that squeal and it was irresistible. <laughs> all right. Um, it's all right. She's playing with Pikachu now, so we're good for the moment. <laughs> well, um, Redna, would you like to do our show maintenance or do you want me to pick it up? Uh, let's see how we go. After the live broadcast, you can find our recorded episodes everywhere podcasts are found. And on our YouTube channel, right? Check out our social media and don't forget to follow on Twitch. You can find our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Council Sotor, our Twitter at the Council Sotor, and our website at www.thecouncilsotor.com. You can also find our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the Council Sotor. But wait, there's more. From every, <laughs> every week, we do the icebreaker question, <laughs> which of course is the question that we just used to kind of stir some chat. Get it going a little bit. Sorry, I had to put the wait. There's more in. This doesn't feel the same without. <laughs> All right, guys. The, the question of the week, and feel free if you're in chat, jump in. We want to hear what you think. This, uh, 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 I don't know if it'll work or not. It's kind of an experimental question. Can be from any genre or fandom, okay? But what is your favorite pirate movie slash slow show slash book? In, in your uh, in your experience, what is your favorite? Um, so Magic did give us an answer. She she put it in our, our chat uh, before we got this thing going. Hers is Treasure Island, uh, the one from uh, approximately nineteen fifty. Is that when uh, Treasure Island came out? I've I've very um, little knowledge of it, so that's pretty cool. Like I'd, I'd like to explore that. She's she's probably got some kind of fan something going on there. I think that's pretty cool. Elise, do you have a qu an answer to this? Do you have any uh, favorite pirate show, book, movie? Uh, so I enjoy listening to other people um, talk like a pirate, and I will buffed out some for um, Talk Like a Pirate Day so I can get my donut from Krispy Kreme. But other than that, Yar! okay. Um, I actually had my daughter dress up one year so we could get the dozen. So uh, cool. There you go. So so um, you're but, going to regale but... us with um pirates of the caribbean i'm pretty lame but I, I waited a very long time to see the ride so movie ride okay after they put captain jack in it so i never saw it well no i did i see it before that i don't know but 
There you go. Pirates of the Caribbean. There you go. So Neff right. ne has Assassin's Creed 4, which is awesome. R Rokenji, Treasure Planet. I love that Chad is jumping in on this. Uh, awesome. Lady Dany is with you, Elise, on uh, Pirates of the Car uh, Caribbean. That's right. Caribbean, however you prefer to say it. Orlando Bloom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I thought we would avoid that. But I apparently not. Redna, do you have a uh, favorite pirate uh, book, movie, show? Actually, it's funny. Uh, my mother, by far, I know the answer for this, would be the original Pirates of the Caribbean ride before they bastardized it with the Disney movie. <laughs> but as for myself, absolutely. Solo, a Star Wars story. The best pirate movie ever. I guess that would be a pirate movie. I hadn't really thought about it that way. I guess so, yeah, if you think about it. I mean, like, the technical definition of actually what a pirate does, they don't mention it, but like bandits and raiders and things. Yeah, that's true. I mean, because it's a flying thing that they, you know, jump on and hijack, the, try to hijack the stuff from anyway. So it's kind of a pirating behavior. I know that they're also smugglers, but I'm going with pirate just because I really like the movie and I'm, I am rewatched it a few times recently. <laughs> so, yeah, so if you, I guess if you are... If you're a, a smuggler who raids things and steals things, that makes you a pirate, right? You're not, <laughs> you've, you've, well, you've crossed the line. Depends. Remember, there's, there's, there's two definitions. You have the state-supported ones, which are called pr privateers, or right? That's right, that's right. Yeah. And then you have I mean, the other pirate, ones that aren't, and you're, they like are taking things from someone else. Whereas right. smuggling is you're you're illegally. You know, going across state or, or international borders in order to get your goods to people who want it. Right. Arisea yeah. says the Goonies. <laughs> How can we forget uh, the oh, Goonies? Yeah, we, that's a good I one. I forgot say. about the Goonies. That was a good answer to that, that was question. That's a pirate. But I mean, you're going to get pirate treasure. So yeah, good one. I forgot about that one. All right. I so, love the movie, I have to admit. <laughs> so, um, I have been behind the scenes watching, re-watching actually, because it was such a good run the first time, Black Sails. I don't know if anybody else has seen the movie, the show Black Sails. I think it was a Showtime deal. Really cool. Like, it's it's kind of edgy, but it's a pirate's thing. It's probably the type of type of thing, though, that maybe one or two people may be total in our... But it's, it's a very good show. If anybody has, uh, I think it's on Hulu right now. You uh, Feel free to go check it out. It's pretty what was, is it Robinson Crusoe? Did that? Ooh, I, um, I really liked that book, actually. Hook. You can't, you can't um, not say Hook. The Robin Williams Hook? Yeah, yes. that was a great movie. I forgot Muppet Treasure Island was a great yeah. one, too. <laughs> Muppets, yeah. I'm really kidding. good one. If you haven't seen that one, you should, because it really is funny. You know, I'm glad I'm starting to really like this question because I was like, man, I don't really like pirates. There's not much for me to say here. Yeah, and but the more you think about it, the cooler it gets. That I really like. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm glad. I, yeah. Lady likes uh, the whole hook answer as well. Very cool. Well, um, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Yes, it does get cooler uh, the further on you go. We actually did um, for a change. Circle back to doing something that we started doing in the show and then kind of got a little bit lax on a little later. So we have brought it back for this week. And that is um, to actually do a poll uh, question. So what I'm going to do is send the, the questions to chat. As we used to do, as everybody knows, um, we would uh, send the question to chat. Everybody has a chance to answer it. So put A, B, C, whichever um, letter corresponds to the answer that you uh, that most closely fits you, and of course at this point, and this is what I've been waiting for the whole show to do, we hand it to Elise, who has to read the question <laughs> and list all of the potential uh, I answers. See. Now I understand why you were waiting for me to do this. Okay, you bet. Mm -hmm. All right, here. Ahoy. Are, are you are you ready? I don't know. Ahoy. What's right. your general attitude toward the new Dantooine incursion event coming with update 5.10.3 R? R. Yes, mateys. <laughs> um, so, A. Avast, hardies, pirates. What is that supposed to indicate? I have no idea. Okay. It's pirate words. Well, Just keep okay. going. All right. B. No quarter. Sick of pirates. Yar. 
<laughs> Keep going. Mm. This is awesome. <laughs> About time. Happy to drop anchor and Dantooine after KOTOR. All right, so it means you like, yeah, you get to go back to Dantooine. Oh, okay. Yay. Woohoo. Oh, okay. D, Dantooine is an old prize. Wet anchor for something new. Uh, so, <laughs> E, raise the black, a new event. F, I, a new event, but past the rum, it'll get old quick. <laughs> That's probably my favorite one. Um, and G, G, right? sure. Yeah, G. Abandoned ship. That's it. <laughs> so by the time Elise oh, abandoned like, ship, like, she drank pr plenty of rum. <laughs> basically. <laughs> right that. that was very well done. I'm very <laughs> impressed. So, all right. And so let's, let's be honest. Who doesn't want to pass the rum? <laughs> okay, I don't want to pass it, but I do want to pass it to me. Well, so, yes, exactly. The general idea was, oh my goodness, let's just start drinking now. Because this thing is going to lose. Uh, so. Basically, I wanted every, in writing this question, I wanted every kind of idea you, you can like. Yay, we've got pirates. We get to deal with pirates again. Or we can be like, oh my goodness, I hate pirates. Sick of pirates. Um, you can say, happy <laughs> to go to Dantooine. Uh, Dantooine has been done before in, in Star Wars games move on to something new. Um, you can just be happy for th there being a new event, or you can say, oh, well, it's an event, but it, it's on a rotating schedule. It's not going to be that positive, or it's going to be fun for a little while, and it's going to get old. And then, of course, if you hate everything, I gave you an option too, namely abandon ship, ye mateys. So, um, feel free, those of you who would like to, and I see people have started doing it. Um, oh, good. Enter, enter the approximate letter that corresponds to how you would answer this question we'll go around the round approximate one <laughs> approximate <laughs> well <laughs> i don't know Arr. i can't represent everything let's see i don't know i don't even i don't even know what i would put here. i think that was a nice uh spread of various uh attitudes i'm sure people can at least find something that's at least 70 percent what they think <laughs> not 71 though like, that's a bit much. I mean, can't have all of it. <laughs> uh, please, those of you who are in chat, give us your answer. Uh, we'll get to your uh, to your answers here in a moment. In the meanwhile, um, let's go around and, and see what we would all say to this. Redna, do you have... I don't remember what I voted. I did vote, but I don't remember. Uh, it was either... I actually have no idea what I voted for. Today, I'm definitely thinking raise the black a new event. Like, I'm just really glad to have a new event in the in the, in the game. Frankly, I wish they'd be doing, you know, like a new event annually. But, you know, that seems to be a bit much to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, it's this is the first event we've gotten in how long? How long has it been? Has, has anyone been keeping bounty track? Bounty Hunter was the last one? Yeah, the bounty. And that's been out forever and ever and ever and ever. I mean, if we're not counting, what did they try? The open world event on uh, IOCath or whatever? It wasn't really an event like this, but it was a new... Like an open world PvP kind of idea? Right. Like Remember with the big... The, right? They had the robot or something and nobody played it? But whatever. Uh, you mean the world boss? No, 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 you you can you can go imitate different creatures, different like like the the walker, right? As one oh, of them, yeah. or you could be the monitor or the mouse droid or whatever on IOCath and do different things. But I, it, it, yeah, but I'm not sure how popular. I still it turned out. want a new event centered around the defeat of the Dark Council, and freaking, it's all about Halloween. It came out. It ended around Halloween, and they should annually be celebrating the death of these Death Eaters. You know, it's like, give me a break. Give me a Halloween themed in game that cool? con concept. They already got meat trees. I'm sure they could come up with some other stuff to throw in there. Hey, I'm down with events. This is the only game that I play that doesn't seem to do any on a rotating basis, and not very many. So. Or, or too much of a rotating basis. I don't know. Yeah, to well, me, no, it's the same one. I've like, played uh, to me, as opposed to like, yeah, you know, there's like a you don't have to call it an Easter event because not everybody celebrates that, but it's around that time or 
you know, yeah. a winter holiday one, and then like the you know, yeah, like, yeah. I want the Halloween to put one. Annually, Gree only happens in the winter. I, I that's what I want. You know, like I want. I agree with you. I I, I don't want every month like quarterly right. for the Rat Ghoul event because it's yeah. got the different planets. You know, like stuff like that. I agree. Like I didn't mind that they were doing the Bounty Hunter event monthly because that could be like the one event that was monthly. But right. they need to inject some rarity or you know into into the other events. Uh, I'm with you. The Bounty Hunter one too was a good money making thing, especially if you were on a low character. Right. It's like running through those bounties actually got you some cash, so it really was good to have once a month. And then you got to practice your character too. And if you were low, they had low level ones, and it, you know, it it level synced with you, sort of, kind of. So but you know, what? this is the only yeah. game. <laughs> I've got an upside down child floating around here. <laughs> but th this is the only game I have played where, I, or at least an MMO where. Because I know, like, there's, like, I'm, I'm thinking specifically personally here about Guild Wars 1. There, there would be something that would come along around Halloween. Everyone knew it was a Halloween event. People were running around with a pumpkin on their heads, for goodness sake. But um, it, it felt different. It always, it, you knew it was Halloween. It was Halloween-ish. But the event was, they, they were decorated for it. They'd be like, what kind of cool decos out mm. all over the, the public areas. But it felt different. It, you know, it didn't, this one feels like, oh, here it is again. And it's the exact same event. It's got, if I do this and this and this, I get this reward. Uh, it feels, this feels very cookie cutter. Whereas that, like the event would happen and it felt to me like you were more like in a, in a, in a, in a, in a mm. festive, like a festive kind of atmosphere. Destiny does an event where they do something like that too, where they decorate. The cool thing with Destiny, they, uh, one of them, I'm not sure if they did it this year because I'm not playing Destiny 2, but in Destiny 1 they had, this that we had to go trick or treating with all of your like advisors, okay. um, in the tower. So imagine like the fleet going to have to go around to like your trainer and blah blah blah. So and you would go and get something from them, um, and then there was recipes in there. And then also if you collected so many of these coins, you could turn it in for the, like this really rare black was a really rare shader to get in the game. And you could actually get it in this event. Um, and then the masks, they would have these masks that were only during the event that you could put on. And, um, and it was like having like the head thing, but I mean, it was just, it was really cute. And, they had little inside jokes during it too. The one character had a mask of one of the other characters on, and like it's, it's, it's subtle, like little subtle things all over yeah. the place that you notice if you're paying attention to the surroundings. Yeah, yeah. and then and that's the only time they do it. I'd like, I mean, like there's got to be to me like about events. There has to be something unique about this event that mm -hmm. only ever happens once. So Ooh, that a broom, like, you got a broom that you could ride. Cool. Like, a, like a broom mount. Yeah. We need a broom it, it mount turns, to sell. Yeah, it turns your it turns your sparrow, which is the scooter thing that you ride around on, into a broom. It was pretty cool. But I mean, yeah, you know, whatever. Anyway. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, mine was I a new event, but pass the room, it'll get old quick. Sorry. Really? <laughs> okay, fair Don't enough. Don't need to rain on people's I think I think the rum was was the appeal there. I have a I have a sneaking suspicion. <laughs> it might have been about it. So, so why do you answer that way? Um, I have a very short attention span and I am not a grinder. Mm. So I like basically like have a limit of time that I'm willing to devote to anything unless it's story. So um, like for the, as we were talking before, the nightlife event, right? I wanted right. the dance floor. I wanted the microphone. Uh huh. Um, yeah, I got this. I wanted the um, the um, covert, whatever it's called, gloves and shoes, um, and I would have taken the whole set, but I didn't have the like I didn't have the patience to go grind that crap. So I was like, I want at least these two things, and then you know if that's all I can get that mm. I can stand to do by the end of the event, I'll be happy. And I do this with most of them. Like I'm like, okay, I want this thing, this thing. I prioritize. And then, yes. um, and I just, I can already see it. I'm probably going to go through it once and be like, mm, okay, that was great. <laughs> it was fun. I am Back not to Warframe. every month. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Right. I am not doing it. I still haven't maxed out Thorn. I have Greed, but not Thorn. Because I think I've maxed out Thorn, annoying. but this one I am so going to crush because I need that Ugna. Really? <laughs> you so you are ga- you are all about the Ugna. Dude, I have not gotten a number one, a, a single one of these retarded additional <laughs> companions outside of the base story, and okay. yet this one straight up my alley. Dude, like, I think this summer, if you work hard, you can get the Ugnaught during this this event. You're two weeks to do it, right? They're going to deploy tomorrow, and it's open for two weeks, yep. back to back. Yep. So I think if they run it once, it ends, and then they run it again. That's what's going to happen over the course of the two weeks. So you got a shot at the Ugnaught, and then later this summer, you have the Narshadar Nightlife event returning, which means that yeah, I you get, get the, the guard you get a shot at that. Oh, so you get yeah. two pigs in one summer. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm not down with those dudes. I mean, I'm, I'm glad you like them, but I have Blizz, and that's enough for me. I'm like, I'm going. Blizz, it's Blizz. Yeah. Got Blizz. He, I find entertaining. I'm like... Oh, goodness. So I, so I got I, Bowdar. That's all I care about. <laughs> yeah, the Wookiee. Okay. Yeah, I, I had a friend who rolled a um, Sith Pureblood uh, smuggler purely because he wanted to slap a Wookiee. <laughs> that was his that was all he wanted in this game it's interesting so um i think the way that i would answer this question is probably along your lines right now like um like i am i am excited for a new event i i i, I do think it's gonna get old i think it's, it's almost kind of between you guys like i think i'm happy for a new event i, I, I kind of identify with everything uh, well besides the pirate thing i don't really care about the pirates but I'm okay with Dantooine showing back up. I, I'm I'm glad for Dantooine. Um, because they've already made so much about it in Star Wars lore. It's it was in Kotor. I think both of the Kotors, right? Kotor one and two. So to get back there, I think is 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 a nostalgic hit for a lot of people that are, that kind of want that. So I think oh, yeah. that's the, cool. The longtime fanboys pro- pre Swotor are freaking they're yeah. ecstatic to be getting this planet. In fact, this is a, this, I remember Dantooine in particular. It was the a number galaxy. People that were like, "You didn't launch with Dantooine? What the heck is going on?" Right. This is a Kotor. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's that like was it's my in the core planet in Kotor. The farmland. Because mm-hmm, you had that whole mystery thing, and you got your, you know, figured out what crystal and blah blah. I mean, like that's you. You could go kind of get lost in the in the fields. I kind of like that. There was lot lots and lots of grass, and you can just go get lost. I think that was pretty cool about that. I hope we get something similar. I suspect we probably won't. It'll be a bunch of buildings around a dailies area. Um, I, so, uh, you know, I, you, but you, I, I'm not going to repeat my long-held desire for another planet in this game that's that's more than just a like a glorified dailies area. So. But yeah, I mean, like, I'm excited for at least to have that back in a game. I think we're, it's been expected, but uh, definitely a, a, a new event. Glad for that. But um, I, I suspect at least I'm probably, uh, you're probably a little bit right. It's going to get old. I don't think it's going to get super old super quick. But doing the doing the event twice back to back is a good way to get there fast. I well, think, the, you know? the key about doing it. Yeah. See, she agrees. The thing about doing it two <laughs> weeks in a row. Is that it lets you get through the gated the the restriction the legacy cap to how much reputation you can get in a week? Yes. The reboot the the reboot out for the second week allows you to actually max out your reputation if you grind it hard enough on multiple characters. That's why it's really important to get those two weeks in a row. Which is why I've always actually said I think that the Gree should only come once a, a year, but it should be for multiple weeks. <laughs> So that people can really impact. I, their I don't know. I, I think they should do it and then and shut you out of the, the end, and then you're like, oh my goodness, I only got one week at this. I can't wait for the next one to show up. So then, yeah, I'll, see, and then, what, I what, never what, grind to any of them. So I guess I'm just not in that big of a hurry. So well, I do the thing. And, I always like, everybody's like, oh, you got to do this. You get the you got to use this purple one, and then you got to do the green one, and blah blah blah. So you don't like cap out your. Di-. And I'm like, guys, I need a spreadsheet. I, that's too much for me. Just now, the only I'm reason why I mentioned stuff I'm and hoping whatever. that this event doesn't happen, you know, every month. Like if this is, I want it to be 
infrequent. But if it's infrequent, then you want the two weeks in a row for the people that do want to be able to complete it. Like, that's why they had to do the green more than once a year. Because otherwise, you're going to make people wait an entire year before they can even cap out on their reputation. That is a little ridiculous in that. Yeah, yeah a year. But I do think holding over for a while is probably a good idea. By the way, I want to make sure to get this into the show while it's on, on my chat window here. Kid Lee has given us all a hint about Dantooine. On a small island, find the bird called Polly and say hi. So that's in the show. <laughs> Slash hi or just uh, say hi? Kid Lee, please clarify for us, sir. You know, is maybe it like a, a target quick, and then slash hi or right. hello? Or... So there is one thing. So Archman says, I hope that they add the Jedi Temple ruins. So if you've played KOTOR 1 and 2, you know, KOTOR 1 is a Jedi. It's kind of like, it's not the main Jedi Temple, but it's like a training facility and there's a council there. And you can go there and that's where you kind of learn some things. I'm not going to try to spoil that, even though it's way past the spoiler, spoiler lift. Um, but then you visit it again in KOTOR 2, it's ruins. I think that would be cool. Do some archaeology where you can show up there and there's things to find in the ruins. That, I think, would be pretty cool. Yeah, it's been three or four hundred years at this stage, so... Maybe there's something cool, you know? Like, so, I, yeah, I agree. I definitely hope that there's the uh, the old Jedi training facility. Whatever okay, well, the results. This is almost 9.30. Um, are we ready? Yeah, I've already sent them to chat. <laughs> oh, okay, well... Uh, the number one answer was about time. Happy to drop anchor in Dantooine after KOTOR with 42 votes. Um, number two was Avast Hardy's Pirates. 24 votes. Um, third is Raise the Black, a new event at 21 votes. I am surprised that, that was third. And um, fourth is I, a new event, but past the rum, it'll get old quick. My answer at 20. Um, no, uh, fifth is no quarter, sick of pirates, yar. Kill them all. That's what no quarter means. Um, Just in case anybody's wondering. I actually had to do research for these. Is Dantooine is an old prize. Way anchor for something new with two votes. These are all pretty much tied at two votes, these last three. And, uh, last was abandoned ship. <laughs> two votes. For the, yeah. for the salty ones among us. Yes. So, um, looking back at these, um, any anybody think? Uh, by the way, let me let me bring out our chat results. Uh, we had three were uh, Vast Hearty's pirates, um, so that was the winner there. Um, nothing for no quarter. Uh, by time got nothing. Dentween and old prize got nothing. Raise the black got four. So we have a lot of people in our chat that are, and basically everything else was zero. So so a lot of people are happy for a new event is what I'm seeing here. And a lot of people are happy about pirates, interestingly enough. So, and I think that co that corresponds pretty well to our uh, our findings, right, in this in this poll. I think 113 votes is respectable, you know. Um, there's a lot of people that are happy that Dantooine is coming back. There's a lot yeah. of people, so this, was, this is what surprised me. They're happy for pirates, even after Rishi. I thought people would be kind of fatigued on pirates after Rishi, you know, but hey, people are happy for pirates. People are happy for a new event, and those were the top three. So it looks to me like like the overall, and and the the, the salty ones, tired pirates, sick of Dantooine, and this there's nothing that's good that's going to come out of this abandoned ship are all just lost, like, like epically. So to me, I think the community is actually genuine, genuinely pretty excited about this event. I don't know if you guys kind of see the same thing from well, from this or you, what. I, I think though, the at least in this poll, the being happy that it's Dantooine was by far the most popular answer. So the question that I would ask is, well, if it wasn't Dantooine, would people be as excited about it? It's worth probably it's not worth... as excited, but there does seem to be some genuine interest in the fact that we've got a new event. Correct, but I'm just pointing out the fact that by mm. far, 42 votes, people were yeah. happy that it's Dantooine. And I've seen that repeated actually on Reddit, that people have mentioned, oh, it's Dantooine, oh, I'm excited. So, so you think it's a, it's, it's a KOTOR nostalgia thing? Is what, a little bit. Do you think bit. that's what it is? I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't think that's the only one, but I think that is, I think it's they, them choosing Dantooine, 
I think was a smart move from a development standpoint, if you're trying to get people, perhaps to entice people to come back, maybe. Sure. So, well, and think yes, about it. I agree. I mean, All the rumors would, going around about a new movie in the time period and the fact, I mean, for all intents and purposes, Bioware established this time period and m most of the like planetary lore and the uniqueness of some of these aspects. So bringing Dantooine in, like, I, you know, it's almost as though I think there's probably a significant portion where it's not just nostalgia. It's also this is key Bioware creation as a contribution to the Star Wars galaxy that's been around for a decade, over a decade, almost two, right? And they want this in the game because this is Bioware. So it's, you know, just more that the game, almost almost that something that's been missing from the game this whole time has finally mm. been added, you know? Okay, so that makes me ask the question then, uh, too little, too late? Do you think? I mean... You know my opinion. I don't know why they waited this long. Yeah. I mean, we're talking seven years. Like, and we're talking almost three with, like, no major story content. I, I just... I, I don't... I mean, we know why. Anthem, obviously. Um, but I, I have to scratch my head about it. But that's my opinion. Yeah. Oh, I, in all honesty, I'm just glad it's in the game. I'm going to say that. I'll take it now. I mean, the other alternative is that they never do it. So, yes, by all means, bring it on. <laughs> I'll jump in happily. I'm actually looking forward to doing some streaming on it. So that's going to be fun this week. Um, another thing I like about what they've done, and I saw, see Archman brought this up in, in chat as well, is the idea that it's not just an event that's live for time and then, then the world goes away. It's going to be there for a bit. So, like, there's an event on Dantooine, but then there's a dailies area. There's actually some questing that you can do after the fact. So... You're, you know, you you can basically get three good weeks out of Dantooine before you've seen all it has to offer, I think. Which I think is, is pretty cool. That's a good way to start the summer. So, so I, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about this, the, the concept of too little too late. I would actually say that just based off of the enthusiasm that is around it, now that we've learned more about it and we've got, you know, more teasers coming out, while in the midst of this information coming, we've had an expansion announced that people do seem to be genuinely excited about. And, you know, I, I can only speak anecdotally, but the number of people that I personally know, even people that I didn't even know were into the game, you know, that like our family or, or friends that are coming back singularly for the expansion. And yet this right. still is drawing attention and, and enthusiasm. It seems to me that this is, it, it shows that there's a degree of interest that is more than flash in the pan. And in, in particular, I think it's really good of them to get this in the game before the expansion comes out, because then those people that aren't coming back for this, when they come back for the expansion, they're also going to, you know, it's yet one more thing that, coming back they probably haven't been in the game for at least two years they're going to discover that there actually has been a, a degree of stuff that's been added there hasn't been an expansion yes. like this, but... this no this is a good point right now because like like so people come back Ooh, dantooine let's go see dantooine it's it's been a while i you know i'm here for the nostalgia right Ooh, but i'm gonna stay for 6.0 which is coming in september and it's and there's some events to keep me busy in the in in the meanwhile so i i think it's actually strategically very clever and i you know I, Personally, I would have I would have personally liked to see a little bit more uh, story tie in leading up to the expansion itself. Um, and, and I do know that there is a little bit of story in this, uh, but I, I am. Uh, I'm happy it's here. Yeah, I mean, I it needed to be done. <laughs> I right. agree with Elise, like, why on earth did it take seven years? But, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I mean, it's, it is that checkbox that, it, hey, at least, they, again, another reason why it's a good thing before the expansion is because when people come back and they say, oh, thank God, they also put Dantooine back in the game. I was worried that that was never going to happen, you know? <laughs> I think my uh, comment really is a reflection of kind of practical watching how people do often, at least here since the Kotfi and Kotet, which is subscribe for a month and then drop. So my concern is, is that we've got this and yes, we have 6.0, but how long of a tail is this going to have? And mm. for me, I kind of think if they had inserted this within that three year period where we had little to nothing along with Ossus, 
you know, we could have had one one year and another one another year. So it wouldn't have it just that whole gap was just very long. And it I'll we agree. lot of lost should have been we lost year. we lot of, lost a lot of people because of just time mm -hmm. and just people who are familiar of cycles of MMOs going, Oh, this looks a lot like mm, I think I'm gonna leave and see what happens. And I just I think it would have been better for them to have managed their content and time a little bit better than this. Okay, let's shove both of these at the end of this, you know, two, three year period, and then we're going to do an expansion, you know, right. in September. <laughs> right. So it just for me, I think it would have been better. But we have yeah. it. I'm not the design. I'm not the developer. I have no idea what was going on back there. I'm sure there are reasons why I had to come down this way. I'm sure money and time are two big ones. Um, but it just, it makes me concerned. And then, you know, you look at WoW and Battle for Azeroth, and they had this huge, like, drop-off after Battle for Azeroth, and I'm just concerned about but that that's that's how the yeah but that's what happens the older a game gets the more that happens they release something people show up to do that and then they move back on to whatever they and that's that's, right. that's okay that's that's a later game when you've done everything there is to do in the game and you're looking for some other stuff it's, that's its life cycle so um i think a lot of it's going to depend on execution it's how how they do this i think if they are able to string people from thing to thing to thing throughout the course of the summer i think it's going to do well for them so um, I, I don't know if we, uh, Redna, do you want to touch a little bit on the lore uh, involved in this? I don't know if that there necessarily is much lore, but but from what I gather, the um the idea of Dantooine, um, the last time we saw it, and this is in Kotor one, there was a star map on the planet. I'd like for I would love personally like that to feature in this somewhere. That star map was the first thing that indicated the uh, Star Forge as well, right? It was the first one you came across, yeah. So, yeah. so to so I think there's only one other place we've seen star maps in, and and the 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 ones that Revan and Malak visited, um, are is in on Korriban, right? The tomb of Nagasado. I think you can go into that and find the star map there. I think one of the one of the I think it's is it the uh, the Inquisitor. I think it's the Inquisitor. You go there, you actually find the star map room, and there's a Terenatech you have to kill. But but you get to see the star map just briefly for the time that you're in there. And I don't think there, it it features on any uh, in any other content in the game. So I, I do hope that that shows up in this. Dantooine's a farming world, so there's not much about Dantooine that is that actually matters, um, except that in the in the case of this story, it's of strategic importance because the wars flared back up. It's kind of like a Republic Bastion world, um, where I, I, it seems to me that like like that's where probably where Republic ships are stopping to take on supplies or whatever before moving to the front lines or something. So that it's of strategic importance to the to the Republic, and the Empire decides to kind of put some pressure on the Republic's supply lines or something by by hitting it. So what they do, of course, is they're going to and this is where the the pirates come in. Um, the the, Repub the the empire likes to work through third party you know proxy type uh, people. So the Nova Blade pirates have been um, um, hired, I suppose, to go in there and, and uh, cause some trouble. So we're going to have some some pirates in the midst of this. Hence, um, at least this great um, pirate impersonations of this episode, which I think are going to be worth hanging Our on to. Yar. Um, and then, um, obviously, then there are, there's going to be like a, a covert imperial presence in the midst of the story. So it feels to me like a, like Makeb 2.0 in some senses, at least from what I've been able to gather from the story going into this. And I don't, don't know if you guys think the same. Because, I mean, like, if you think about Makeb, it was kind of like a covert operation from the Empire as well. I was not fond of Makeb, so I'm not the person to talk to Really? Yeah, no. Uh, uh, I mean, that was the entire story for the Empire was that you were there covertly doing this, these missions, uh, and I mean, actively as a part of that storytelling was we are not going to get noticed by the Republic, and you and you successfully get through the entire adventure without the Republic un understanding that you've actually, uh, actually, actually undermined them and uh, and uh, succeeded 
with that, I actually thought it was kind of clever too because when you finish the Republic one, then the reason you go back for dailies is to find out why the planet hasn't been utterly obliterated as you had thought it was going to be. And when you take do the Empire storyline, you discover that it's because of your own orchestrations on the Empire side that you uh, prevent the planet from uh, going yes. over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think it's like you could you had to have played both stories to actually get the full idea. I would I would hope that that would be the the same thing that happens with Dantooine. I don't know, necessarily know even if it's not through the event, but maybe through the dailies or the the little bit of story that we get. But uh, going forward, I, I definitely hope um, we get some of that. Um, it's a written release. You guys want to say anything else about lore before we go into actual um, features of the uh, of the event? I know there's no problem. It's a farming planet. Goodness, what else is there to say? No, I mean the only lore I know is what I played in Kotor. So right, yeah, <laughs> Which and, is and we've kind of touched on, yeah. I, I mean, I, 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 don't, I just I guess those people that haven't played Kotor and don't understand the fandom, it, it cannot be understand it understated how much love there is for Dantooine for people, even because we're not doing a good job of selling it, right? It's oh well, it's, I mean it's a farming planet. It's a, <laughs> that's true, <laughs> you know, but, not. but it, there really yeah. is like throughout all of the Star Wars Kotor fandom, Dantooine is like key. It's somehow so, gotten this iconic uh, representation. Well, it, it was in galaxies. I, can I can I just say the reason why I really that Dantooine was my favorite planet in Kotor, and it's not clearly as I've stated many times. I don't read the books. I didn't read the comic books. I've never touched Darth Bane books ever. I, I don't know nothing about none of that stuff. But after having to smog through Terrace, you you get here. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, thank you, God. I don't have to deal with no more Rackles and running up and down and those confusing levels and Terrace. And you're like, thank you. <laughs> Give me my lightsaber. Like that's... The upper level, the lower level, the oh undercity. Oh my god, the... <laughs> I hate Terrace. I hate it in this game because of KOTOR. I hate Terrace. So I kind of uh, liked the swoop race, though. I won't lie. This, yeah, the swoop okay. races were cool, yeah. I failed it a couple times because I didn't understand what I was doing. Davik Kang, that guy was great. You can't progress the storyline unless you win your... Oh, yeah. So you have You're... to keep like doing it until you win it. <laughs> Which is just, you know, just like the cherry on and top. And the controls are not perfect. No, so you basically no. just have to <laughs> you guys learn it and win it. <laughs> I, I think I was getting ready to like rage quit when I finally That's won hilarious. my swoop rank. At least they make them <laughs> optional everywhere else. There's actually good money to be made in swoops in that game. My goodness. Yeah, I don't, I don't do it. But anyway, so that's that's for me. That is why I love <laughs> Because I got to get out of Terrace and finally get my lightsaber. Yeah, and they told was what your, kind uh... of Jedi I was going to be. Like, it was just amazing. Anyway, go on. Oh, is that when you get your... That is, isn't it? Yeah. That's when you get find yeah. out what kind of Jedi you're going to be. Yeah. And the, the planet is so awesome. Because remember, well, I only played... I've only played the balance one or whatever. The yellow lightsaber, the Sentinel. So, you know, you have that thing where you have to negotiate with the hostage and... You have to do that, like, investigation about, what was it, somebody dies or... Yeah, you, you walk in on a murder down. scene, and they're trying to figure it out, and you have to go... Yeah. You have to go... But you have to do that no matter what your, your class oh, okay. is. okay. So yeah. I didn't know. But I yeah, was but like... Yeah, but isn't oh, it, like, influenced the, by what your class is? Or I'm, the, I'm the diplomat. I'm the... You have counsel, yeah. so I, like, took it all serious. I was like, oh... <laughs> she was, she was role-playing, guys. Elise yeah, was role-playing this. She's <laughs> like... Yeah, I gotta do this right. I have to find, you know, the middle way and blah blah. So I should have gotten totally some screenshots this was, of this stuff. This is one of the first games that I played that, like, when you encounter that aspect of it, where like, it almost the way that it feels is that if you don't play it right based off of the character choice you made, that maybe something will go wrong, or you'll, you know, especially after having done that stupid swoop race and you screw it up and you just have to keep doing it over and over again. It's like, I'm not going to get this wrong. I'm going to freaking make the right conversation choices here. <laughs> and you also, this one is where you cannot get a companion too in the game. So it does make it. Oh, because you could uh, kill Juhani, not even knowing yeah. that there was a companion involved. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. 
you pick the wrong conversation thing, she attacks you and you have to kill her. Yeah, and they're so, just a gray block the whole time and you never correct. know if she get can her. be a companion. Yeah. Yeah. You killed her every time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, spoiler she, alert. Yeah, is your, she wasn't that great. Romanceable companion. You're assuming I've done it more than once, Sakari. <laughs> oh, <laughs> to yes, say every time. You killed her. <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna yeah. play that game seventeen times. So like I like I played it every which way. I, I yeah, I made all the mistakes the very first time I played it too. Killed Juhani, and then I ca- you, you have that block of nine of them, right? And you can pick whichever one of your your companions you run with. I had I had the gray box right in the middle, <laughs> and never understood and, why I never got that companion. I can't find this damn companion. <laughs> um, yeah, and then like I like I I killed her the very first time, and then like I was like, oh, I think I screwed up. So then I like went and, like did something as I was like oh crap like i didn't have to do that so then you know i went back and whatever and that's when i found out you can romance her too because uh, like later but anyway i digress as a female and we should probably talk about play. this game what no just as male. Male? just as male. Oh, male so okay so we have this event coming out um again <laughs> the, the war has reignited this the nova blade pirates are involved the sith and the empire are involved or you know they're trying to do some covert ops. Of course, the Republic owns the world, so everyone is coming back together. So, um, as far as the featured rewards are concerned, the Nova Blade and Dantooine Homesteader Armor sets. No idea what those look like, unless somebody has reverse engineered them. Are there pictures out there? Did we? Uh, of the of the D- data mining of yeah. the of the armor sets. I, I don't, don't know. About I, I don't that, care. Did you mention <laughs> that there's double rewards during this time too? Yes, uh, so in the announcement section, we can go over the calendar because I, I, I okay. found the dates then. We can talk about, there's a lot of events this summer. Some of them overlap, so we'll, we'll give you guys a timeline. So, um, Of course, we've spoken about the Agnor Companion. As a result of this event, you can earn the Agnor Companion. I don't know if it's going to be purely luck-based or if it's going to be something that you can actually accumulate enough a currency of some sort and go buy. I sure hope that's the one because I'm so tired of missing out because I'm not as lucky as some other people. So we'll see. There is a walker mount involved somehow. You can have that thing. He is ugly as sin. Yes. You can have them. I'll stick with Blue. Ooh, I think I think I got a picture of him. Here's the Ugnort companion. <laughs> he sure looks ugly. What is it with pig creatures as the, as the companion? You know, you can earn two this summer. Oh, yeah. But it is. Do you, do you have something against pork? Because that's not the first time you've mentioned it on yeah, the Pig episode. characters. Well, I mean, like, yeah. But, I mean, look, if you play your cards right, you can get an Ugnort and a Gamorian this summer. <laughs> assuming, they, assuming they bring the Gamorian back on the Narshad or Nightlife event. I mean, the only thing that would make me want to grind that thing out is if they're, you got a, a you, what you, you call it, dude that would, like, eat him or something every once in a while. I would find that Feed him to your Wampa. That. that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, maybe uh yeah uh, or if you got to feed him to your ranker that would be so uh there's a walker mount involved i don't quite know what that's gonna be cath hound mount okay fair enough i don't think it's gonna uh, they're gonna have to do something pretty snazzy because a cath hound to me seems kind of bland compared to all of the things that they've been doing with mounts lately like even though the mounts like have to have sheens that kind of work across them they're animated in different ways even even the uh um the creature mounts i don't know how a cath hound mount is going to generate so much excitement some kind of unique uh mount flair that they tie into it maybe i hope so because a oh, cath hound that... just seems kind of bland to me at least the walker mount though we have how many of those yeah. We at least yeah. have two of them. I mean, you got one as a free like subscriber thing, so everybody and their brother has two one of those. As a free subscriber thing. Yeah, and then there's another one you could get too that was like cheap or you earned it finishing some story something. And people I, like, still that love them though. Kinda, I'm sick of it. But... Too. There needs to be like I don't know glitter bombs or something that shoot out the glitter. back end or something. <laughs> that would be entertaining. Out the back end, everybody. Yours, <laughs> its tail goes up and a glitter bomb pops out. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, for me, people would not grind that out. Come on now. For me, I know we're happy to go back to Dantooine, but I think when you start to unpack what does Dantooine have to offer, I'm kind of hoping for something new. I don't know if that, if the, you know, because yeah, it's Cathounds. Yeah, is that the only wildlife there is on? I, I seem to remember there being something else, but it's not coming to me. Anyone can else. Else can help me out. Remember what the, the um, 
wildlife wise that tend to be threatening. But I seem to remember in Kotor it was just wave upon wave of cath hounds. So I, I will see. Um, there's a cath hound mini pet. So yes, by the time you're sick, done with this, you get to be sick of the cath hounds. Dantooine inspired stronghold decos. Um, so we'll see. Uh, and then there's one thing that I wanted to put this on screen Hello, as well. Elise, decos, decos. <laughs> hey, I already said something on Twitter about decos. About Grass it. decos. Like, so I I hope they have a bunch of plants. I love plant decos. Please, Eric, Keith, if anybody's watching this. Yes. You know, new you're not the first manager. person I've recently foliage. heard. Please, more foliage. Yes. Uh, things Please. that you can get more than Laura. one of and use to really uh, yes. enhance ambiance within a, de uh, a stronghold. I agree with you. I, it doesn't all need to be unique epic that you really only want one of in your stronghold. There's a and, big need for like chairs and plants yeah. and things that you can put more than one yes. of. And, and, and please, these are the most expensive things. Do not make me have to run hard mode master mode flashpoints to have a chance because they are like millions upon millions of dollars on the market i do not have that kind of money <laughs> even right. when i do you need subscribed. you need to play yes as a subscriber all the time to have that kind of money. and i just don't have the attention span for that so um <laughs> I, I need can we please have some to be buying please that's all I'm asking. Oh, if you're talking about like for purchase from your well, like deco vendor in so, your what's your so what name? They, I forget. Right. So what they do is they put a few of the plants, and I bought like if you go to my stronghold in Manon, I have plants everywhere. I put the grass down that you could get from the Yavin Four vendor, and then there's a couple of other ones that like plants you could buy like the reeds or whatever, and I just bought tons of those, and they were mm. pretty cheap. And have them all over Manan, and then like they had in the um, in the um, you know trader storyline. I'm having a um, the uh, um, the, the no, it's uh, the the you know the the trader storyline, the three flashpoints. Yeah, For those. This yeah, the Umbar, the, 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 the yeah Umbar. Um, they had those. They had so many great like planters that hung and fountains mm. and stuff. But you had to play like the master mode to have an increased chance of getting them. And if you played the solo one, you really didn't get any of those drop at all, really. Um, so it's the people who are running the master modes all the time that were getting all those decos and they were putting it up on the market. And because there's not that many people who are running the master mode flashpoints. They were making bank. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. And so, like, and I just don't have the patience, A, to do master modes, frankly. Um, I would have ground out for more of that if I could have done solo or the easier levels. But, oh, my God, once they put all three of those flashpoints together, it just was well, like... Well, at least you're social, right? Like, they should have... In my opinion, like different kinds of decos that you can get, get certain, you have to run the solo for certain kinds of decos or, yeah. or certain available decos. Then you have to run it on the easier cooperative play modes to, to get certain other decos. And then you have to run the master modes. So if you really want the full set of what's there, the full layout, you have to run it every which way. But certain ones are, are more available, I think, um, in certain other ways. I think that would be cool. That would kind of fill out. Right. The different or ways that you could experience the flashpoint. I don't know. Make it be able to, maybe you could buy them. You can get it to drop in the harder mode, and then you don't have to spend your whatever. Or you can buy it from the vendor if you just can't get that one piece. Like they were talking about doing that basically in the new gearing thing, right? Uh, but not with decos. But anyway, I, I just, we need more decos to drop in Overland content instead of making it constantly behind a. Right. Group content only. Yeah, the difficulty, like the, the gated by difficulty, I, I think yeah. is, is kind of the idea. I do want to put this up. Uh, Charles made an announcement on the, just kind of slipped it into a, a um, piece, a discussion that was on the forums. Those who've completed Jedi Under Siege, which is the latest content, will also find a little, uh, a fun little bit of story in this update that's unrelated to Dantooine. It involves a staff meeting and some uh, public speaking opportunities 
but I shall say no more. So um, obviously, there's a little bit of uh, there's a little hopefully bit of story. This the, hopefully, this is the dissolution of the alliance. You think so? That's what I'm hoping. I want to see that die, like yesterday. And go back to your <laughs> your um, previous empire spectrum. and republic. Yeah, like isn't that supposed to be the point of the game? Not I'm some tyrannical dictator of the galaxy. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you can come, like, if you want to be a bounty hunter now, you can go hunt bounties. <laughs> again. Yeah, maybe go, I can go just back to yeah, your... smuggle stuff again. I mean, <laughs> we kind of had to go through this if you think about it. Ain't I mean, you like, that... Most of the really yeah. long games, like, I mean, like, World of Warcraft did it too, right? They had that thing where the Horde of the Alliance, come, uh, like, worked together in Legion, and then in Battle of Azeroth, they were like, screw you, and the horse you rode in on, and... I'm gonna yeah, that's fine. You on so the, butt. the factions work so. together towards a common goal. That's one thing. To make your individual character the dictator of the entire <laughs> galaxy, that's not something they've done in World of Warcraft and could have been avoided. Right. Yes. <laughs> now, okay. overthrowing it's the dictator. Asinine stupidity for you know something that's supposed to have eight different stories going on, except that every <laughs> single one of us, you know, forget the fact that there are hundreds of thousands of people playing the game we're all singular <laughs> the galaxy's dictator <laughs> it's like just really piss poor storytelling <laughs> oh well oh especially well. for games that's supposed to evolve and expand its story over time it's like oh hey we didn't pigeonhole ourselves here <laughs> it's like i'm now the most famous covert operative in all of the galaxy right oh man like, that's really I'm going to cypher nine <laughs> Every, everybody knows who I am. <laughs> so like it's like it's kind of like Arya not using her ability to look like anybody else in the penultimate <laughs> episode of a, of a show. Right. <laughs> Just a, a little bit of uh, head. So yeah, um, I think I think that's about it. I, I am definitely looking forward to at least some new content in this game, something that's that's repeatable, that's ongoing new reputation i think is going to be fun so uh, i think and i think generally um to kind of wrap things up i think the community is into this as well like i am uh i'm excited for the next few months and, and this uh the summer in swotor um speaking of that i, I did uh, mention earlier that we would give you guys a bit of a breakdown on on the calendar what's going to happen so here are the events i'm starting tomorrow june 4th and it's going for two weeks i believe they're going to run it's a one week event so they're going to run the event it's going to close and then they're going to do it again so two weeks running, we have the Dantooine Pirate Incursion event. The second week is going to overlap with a double XP CXP event. So June 11th through June 18th um, will be the, a double XP. So definitely, um, you can probably get in and do the pirate thing this uh, this week. And if you've got a character you want to level or something else you really want to jam on the XP, uh, you'll have an opportunity to do that. Um, can, uh, you can do Dantooine though at like level twenty or something like that. Like it is. Uh, like I think all the you're other right. Events, yeah, I think you're right. To do it. I don't it, know how it works with the story, but it and is, if it's repeatable, it you can grind some XP. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. just Marie keeping is that in mind. Still fifty, but it's um, traditionally been a very good way to run those events as a lobby uh, for experience grinding, especially with this yes. double XP incoming. So I, I I expect that we're probably going to have a lot of there's going to be a lot of interest in in running the dailies, um, especially that second um, week. Yes. May I mention, please, if you want to finish out, for those of you who maybe didn't watch the live stream, they are doing away with command experience. So if you want those achievements, you need to finish that before they take it away. And I can't remember if they've said yet when they're going away, but they're going to go away. So this might be a good time for you if you are bound to determine to grind that out. <laughs> to bash your head against that. I, I would like assume that's say, going to... I'm I... just happy I didn't do it because... <laughs> <laughs> since it's a game I it. system i would assume it will go out with the expansion but, it, it's yeah, like it's, it's, it's like uh, everything they do at bioware they do it they think it's really cool then they lose interest on it and they move on to something else <laughs> because like... it wasn't really cool and it was a terrible <laughs> idea <laughs> so uh, so yes but don't worry because just like other events that you really have to grind your butt off for they'll probably just delete them anyway so don't do the grind <laughs> she was so okay so we've spoke we've gotten us up to to the 18th um, starting on the 18th again at Relics of the Gree, that's going to go on through the 24th. So we have a, something going that week, and then also that week, um, the Narshadar Nightlife event goes live. So that'll be June 18th 
all the way to the end of July. On July 30th, uh, the nightlife event will end. So we have a, like a stack of things over June and July, overlapping events. There's a lot of things to do. That's going to be um, it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, another thing that's happening with tomorrow's update, they are updating the planetary arrivals of certain planets: Alderaan, Corellia, Hoth, Korriban, and Titan. What is a planetary arrival? So you know how we, when you when you fly, you, you go to your your cockpit and you say, "Take me to Tatooine." And then your ship, you know, reorients, goes through light speed, and then it comes out. When you get off of your ship, there's a little cinematic that plays, like at the arrival. And they've they've redone, but I think, the Narsha Dar one. I want to say. Do we still have ships in the game? I can't remember the last time I used one. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Like, so you got to actually get Even on your ship you to experience Even when you click the this. little map, your ship is still going. So right. it's. It's just, true. Just kind of goes with you. So, um, but yeah, that, so I definitely check it out. Uh, so again, the list is Alderaan, Corellia, Hoth, Oroban, and Tython are all updated. So I think it's going to be pretty cool. I'm really interested to see the Corban and the Tython ones because you usually see that whole cinematic. Or at least I do. Maybe I'm the only one, but... You see that whole thing getting off the ship. Oh, blah, right, because that one's guaranteed beginning. when you start your No, I don't, right. think, I don't think character. that's the one. I don't think that's what this means. Really? Yes, yes there is one. When you're a brand new character, it shows mm -hmm. you arriving on your starter planet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think that's what this is. I, no, think, I, I think what this is is when you fly Dude, your ship to Tython. if they don't do that at the same time, that's actually like a major miss opportunity. Well, I didn't, didn't they update Korriban and Tython? They, they added some like, uh, well, it was like camera angles and certain things they did beef those up you know fairly recently um, i mean maybe that sounds vaguely familiar but but yeah. I, I think this is when you fly your ship to Korriban and you get off your ship this is there's going to be a new thing. i think this so we'll see next week we'll we'll compare notes and see what we which one it turns out to be another thing last week uh, what was it thursday they did the live stream elise um, it was right when she was driving home from work, right when I was at work. Yep. So I'm still working my so way through it. I didn't it. get to look at any of the pictures they were putting up. I just got <laughs> to listen to it. Right. You got to listen to the, the audio. <laughs> but um, go check that out. If you go to Swotor's uh, Twitch channel, so twitch.tv slash Swotor, it's the little thing up there right now. You can click it. It's in their history. Um, go check that out. And and something I, I would like to ask the it's council on members. YouTube kind too. Of, I'm sorry, alive. I keep interrupting you. Oh, it, it is on, is YouTube. on YouTube. Okay, good. No, no, it I'm glad. It's good information. Too. So uh, what we would, what we've kind of been doing with the council's schedule the last, um, really since the beginning of the year, is just kind of playing it by ear. If there's something to talk about, we get together and we've met and we've we've spoken about it. Um, since there's going to be some some pretty good news here this week, I know that there's this. Uh, we've been talking about the the event this this uh, time. Next um, week we'll have we could probably do some recap, but I'd like to, if it's okay with the rest of the council for us to uh, try to see if we can get together and talk about. Um, the live stream and what's coming up and what has been announced, the changes in gearing and stuff. So I don't know if you guys are down for that. Um, stay tuned That's to next Twitter. Week, right? Yes. Next week, Monday, I'm not going to put any pressure on anybody, but I'd like to see if we can organize that. If not, um, we will do it, but I, I'd like to definitely give us, uh, do some, uh, <clears throat> some focus on that. Wait, hey, it's you entirely said next on a lease. Because I, I can't, I, I can't because <laughs> it's E3. So oh, I will really? be streaming the exact same time. Oh, no kidding. With okay. Kidley and JT. So I'm fairly certain Kidley uh, can probably pop up. And so, that's, not, so that's on Kidley's that's channel, cool. right? Is what I care the last time I cared about E3. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the guys that okay. like all the games. So, okay. So I, I would definitely like to, to touch on, on gearing and, and the changes coming to that in our next episode. We're not going to make any... any I'm definitely so I think that's it for this episode right guys are we done any, any, anybody have anything else to say Elise has some thank yous to give I do thank you I can't do it as well as my uh, magic ace but thank you thank you for voting it's always entertaining thank you for showing up and watching us and uh, chit chatting and chat so thank you very much all right Redna all right, and that brings us to the end of the episode. The Council is adjourned. If you'd like to reach us, you can email us at thecouncil at thecouncilswilter.com. Like our Facebook page at, at facebook.com. I've got Magic Ace on the brain, apparently. Uh, slash the Council Swotor. And yeah, please do go like us on fa uh, Facebook. You can find Elise on Twitter at abron35, Magic Ace at the Magic Ace. 
myself at R3DM4, and Sakari at I am Sakari. Also, don't forget our Patreon page at patreon.com slash thecouncilswotor, where patrons can catch the articles we're talking about behind the scenes and exclusive backstage access to our after show chat. That's it for us this week, guys. Dantooine is too remote to make an effective demonstration. But don't worry, we will deal with your rebel friends soon enough. I understand. You are on this council, but we do not grant you the rank of master. What? How can you do this? This is outrageous. It's unfair. How can you be on the council and not be a master? Take a seat, young Skywalker. Forgive me, master. 